Hello everyone, welcome back to the Shintar Higashi Show with PDU. Today we have a very special episode. Why Judo sucks? <laughs> okay, well, before we talk about why Judo sucks, we're going to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Levon yep. and Jason. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, you guys are doing judo and you guys love it, but you know, judo sucks. <laughs> and this is <laughs> and thanks to your support, we can talk about it on this podcast. That's very, very true. Yeah. So yeah, why what 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 do you what aspect do you want to talk about? What aspect of you know, of judo? I mean there's a lot, and yeah. this is kind of tongue in cheek, you yeah. know, I'm like kind of joking around, half joking around. Yeah. Uh and you know, a lot of it is because I'm doing jujitsu and I'm re- I've wrestled. Yeah. Yeah. And you have access to some of the best champions in the world here yeah. in the United States. Yeah. Right? I'll never forget, man, when I was in high school, Kale Sanderson came and did a seminar. Mm, legend. At my high school. Yeah. That's Kale a, Sanderson. Yeah. yeah. How did, wow. Came to your awesome. high school? Came to my high school. We didn't have to pay a dime. Wow. Yeah. And then, let me tell you something. I could have a conversation with him. And I bought a t-shirt and he signed my shirt. It's like, <laughs> dear Shintaro, you know, uh, keep working hard, shoot for the stars or something. Yeah. Kale. Yeah. Kale Sanderson. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's accessible. Right. Oh, he's a gold medalist wrestler, a super, gold medalist. Yeah. super coach. Yeah. Yeah. He went undefeated in the NCAA. It's accessible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I went to Henzo's before yeah. and uh, Gordon Ryan was there and I was able to roll with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Accessible. Right. I know Brian Glick. He knows John Donaher. Yeah. Like if I wanted to, Glick would take me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, we could go to Texas and I could see Gordon Ryan. Yeah. I could work out with him if I wanted to. Yeah. Right. So that's accessible. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Judo, these champions are inaccessible. There's, I mean, they're accessible to me because like I'm Japanese and I could go to Japan. Yeah. And I could access those guys. But if I fly to France, yeah. I don't speak French. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go to Russia and then hang out with uh, Denisov. So that's more about right? like... I can't do that. You're saying that's a problem of not having a lot of... Uh, champions in America, like judo champions, like with Travis... Steven, yeah, there's uh, Travis. Yeah, Kayla right? Harris. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes and no. Yeah, there's much more, many more champions outside of the country than here. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, most of the champions so are in here. The, in the States, yeah. Right? They're absolutely accessible. And then the culture behind it is like a sort of a micro-economy even within that culture. Yeah. Right? People buy videos, they go to seminars, you know, people fly in, yeah. seminarians or clinicians all the time. Mm-hmm. In Judo, there isn't really that culture. In that right? sense, it's more like, well, I guess in re- you, for wrestling, like Kale Sanders did, like they people have seminars, but aren't they kind of yeah. similar because they're more like scholastic sports? Maybe. That, yeah. yeah. You could go to a camp in the summer, like yeah. a wrestling camp. You know, hey, these are the clinicians that are going to be there. This guy wrestled here. This guy wrestled there. Right. right. And then there's leagues. Yeah. There's leagues, right? In wrestling, we're talking about like NCAA's, Division One, Division Two, Division Three, or AAU, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah, or whatever it is, right? But yeah. like Division One, these are the main schools. This guy wrestled for Iowa or Iowa State. You know, let's have him over for a seminar. What was it like being yeah. at Iowa or Iowa State? They have these big programs with a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. In jiu-jitsu too, right? There's affiliations, yeah. right? Oh, this guy is from this affiliate. Yeah. There's a lot of students there. There's money in the sport. There's these micro economies on. Yeah, yeah. Right? In judo, there's not much of that. Yeah. You know? How many dojos do you really know in the United States? Not that many. Yeah. Right? They're all doing their thing independently in little pockets, and they're isolated. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to kind of like really bring everyone together because everyone's so worried about injuries and such. Yeah. Right, it, I it's see. like a very tough thing to grow. I think, right, because the numbers are not quite there to support that kind of an economy. Uh huh. You know, I just got an inquiry today. It's like, hey, we're a small school. I think it was in Wyoming. Thank yeah. you for reaching out. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization. We have a you know, not that many students or whatever it is. Can you come? What is your fee? And I'm like twenty five hundred yeah. plus hotel and flight. You yeah. know, and that's kind of a flat rate for a lot of these schools now. And it's like they're pr- kind of priced out. Yeah. Right? As opposed to like a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school, like a mega school with 300 plus students, they're not going to get priced out by that. Yeah. Like, we'll just charge everyone 50 bucks a head. Uh-huh. Right? Easy. Right, right. You know what I mean? So that kind of makes it not such a good experience. Not a you good, not mean? a good product almost in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're joining 
a group, right? You're joining yeah. a community, but the community is not quite big. It's a little bit too niche. I see. You know what I mean? I see. That's why judo sucks. <laughs> In terms of population, yeah. between the three main grappling sports, wrestling, BJJ, judo is the smallest. In the States. In the States. Yeah, yeah. Globally, judo is number one. Yeah. Right? You think we can take a slice of pie, like a slice of that global pie, somehow, like kind of like bring that influence into the States? You know, little by little, yes, because finally IJF did something really good. Judo Gallery. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. Judo Gallery, oh, I follow, which well, is on their Instagram, Instagram yeah. account. Over a million people will follow it, and they have good, like, quality clips from the IJF tour. Yeah. I love that. That's amazing. That's what we need. Yeah. And we need guys in the U.S. to share it. I'm always sharing and reposting their stuff and tagging them, mm -hmm. you know, to spread judo more on a social media thing. And that's another point. Why judo stocks people aren't on social media enough. You go to a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament, yeah. everybody is broadcasting it online. Yeah, I see. They tag each other, like each other's things, comment on each other. Uh, I don't want to call it like, you know, the word, the CJ. You know, a little bit of a circle jerk. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, a little bit in a good way. In a you good know, way, it's because supporting each other. Yes, the supporting each other. There's a lot of love in the community, and then oh man, you took a, a silver medal at the the open, you know, or you're going into the majors, and so they live online. This well, thing, I, right? I I know how that feels because like when I was in college, you know, I was one of the few kids in the school that did judo. What schools you go to? Oh, uh, it's. It's school in Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> was it Princeton Community College? Or really yeah, some, something like that. Yeah. Man, you were dying yeah. to throw that uh, in. I was waiting no, for me what to the heck? bring that up. I up. Man, so douchey. <laughs> I did not, well, I, it, it was irrelevant, but. So when you were at Princeton okay, University. I was at Princeton. Doing judo at the Princeton University Judo Club in Princeton, New Jersey. That's right. And. Man, oh my God. I went to a local tournament in <laughs> Princeton. And then in Princeton, yeah. okay. Well, basically, what had happened was I went, came back, I I won some medals, but then it's like no, no one knows, no one cares. Yeah, no like I know it's like you know, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. kind of before the days of all this crazy social media. Like in, the Instagram wasn't really a thing, yes, whatever. Yeah, but thing. yeah, but it kind of you know I didn't really feel ha like it was kind of sucked, you know, like yeah, yep. all I trained yeah. all that and then no recognition, yep. you know. And you know, the self-contained community has to overcome yeah. the mainstream neglect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I post something from judo, uh, not to my judo community, but randomly, before my judo following, yeah, yeah. Okay? if I posted me on the podium, it could have been a tough tournament. It could have been Liberty Bell. Yeah. Or, I don't know, President's, President's Cup. Cup. All these yeah. tournament names that mean nothing to 99% yeah. of the world. All my friends from high school would be like, oh, it's kind of nice that you're still doing karate. <laughs> Little buddy. Still uh, going after those trophies. Chop, chop. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Judo chop master. Ha, ha, ha. Like, uh, right? Whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the self-contained community of the judo people has to overcome and out-noise <laughs> those people who are non-grapplers who don't matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it does matter if you have, yeah. you know, 137 followers and your community is your community from your school, whatever yeah. it is, right? And then you're posting videos of yourself winning judo matches. And all your friends are like, you know, you get 14 likes or something and it kind of stings. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like you're almost better off like doing lip syncing TikTok videos and posting it because more people will watch it. And they think they'll find it more interesting. Find it more <laughs> interesting and appeal to the general public, right? <laughs> But the community, if it's strong enough, yeah, right, it'll overcome that, and that's what jujitsu has that judo doesn't. So it's like they're bouncing off each other, but then because that force is so strong, it kind of spills over to the mainstream. A little yeah. bit, or the mainstream matters less. I see. I see. Because this self-contained community, yeah, is so powerful. Right. Not powerful, but like it's sustained. It could, sustaining. Yeah, yeah. It's like a self-sustaining like validation machine. Yeah, you know what I mean. But wouldn't yeah. you? Mm, you could make a case that maybe is there like an echo echo chamber. Like you think there, yeah, you like your your circle jerk comment yeah. was kind of like it could go. It could go either like it could be bad for the community too. No. 
Maybe. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I guess it, it depends on the exposure you have. Like yeah. tournament, you know. Yeah. But this is the thing, also, right? Yeah. When you're a grappler, let's just say you're a jiu-jitsu person. Yeah. And you take a Pan American medal. Yeah. As a blue belt in a master's division. Yeah. You could post that you are a Pan Am champion. Yeah. And the community gives tons of likes, tons of things, yeah. lots of engagement. And you could call yourself a champion mm-hmm. or medalist. And there'll be numbers to validate that. Because of the likes. Of the likes and the following yeah. and the thing. So now all of a sudden, you're a professional athlete with a huge <laughs> following. Uh-huh. And now when you go to work... Uh-huh. With normies, normies, <laughs> I call these people who non grapple people normies. When you go to work with normies, you're an accountant or something. Uh-huh. Your peers looks at your Instagram and sees that you have eleven thousand followers <laughs> and four hundred and seventy two likes on this one thing where you're like doing this sport. Yeah. Wow, you must be a professional athlete. <laughs> Is the general gist. So you could appeal to the mainstream. Normy culture. It's like it, 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 it with legitimized your, your activity. It just my, yeah, it does. Yeah, it really does. And that's something that jujitsu has that judo doesn't. Mm. Right. I I see that. I see that. Yeah. So that's why judo sucks. Because that they, you, <clears throat> like people. We have to be better, guys. <laughs> we have to repost each other's bad techniques and whatever it is, and like, and you know, this is the thing too. At least jujitsu has an opportunity. To compete in the same tournaments as the champions. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Judo, there's one world championships. I mean, masters, they have that too, veterans, yeah. right? But there's one world championships. And you're not going to get there. You have to be obvious. top two in the country. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. You're either number one in the country or number two in the country. Yeah. And every country gets to send two delegates. That's it. Yeah. There's no brown belt division. There's no. You could just sign up for it. There's none of that. Yeah. So you, there's access to that in jiu-jitsu that there isn't in judo. There's also access to Pan Ams. Uh-huh. You could be a Pan American champion. But that's super tough as in judo. Like, uh, you can't really You can't make, do it. You know, they sell one guy. Yeah, exactly. Or two guys, yeah. right? So you could access these same tournaments with the champions. And you could say you're a Pan Am medalist. You could say a world medalist. Even like the New York Open or the Chicago Open or the yeah. Denver Open, those are opens and there's a certain level associated with it. Yeah. Right? But then if you look at the divisions, blue belt, purple belt, heavily contested, 70, 80 people. Black belt division, a lot smaller. Oh, you're talking about BJJ? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But it has an illusion of like this thing like, wow, you did it. And yeah. I'm not criticizing Jiu Jitsu, they're doing an amazing job. They're yeah. a marketing machine. Yeah. Right? And they're using it as a platform to market and then appeal to the mainstream public too. And it's working because people start doing jujitsu. It's safe, not like judo. Judo is very unsafe for yeah. 90% of the population. <clears throat> it's much safer. And there's an opportunity to compete at a very high level, in air quotes, yeah. right? And compete and be a world champion or a world medalist in your respective belt and age division alongside the champions that are here right now who are the best in the world, arguably, right? Right, right. Do you know there is none? There's no dream. There's, there's no dream. Can't be a dreamer. <laughs> I'm going to go to the Olympics one day. Everyone's like, no, you're not. It's a tournament once every four years. It's extremely difficult to do. I'm going to be a world champion one day. Good luck. It's even tougher to win the world It's even harder yeah. to win the world championship. Yeah. I'm going to be a world champion in jiu-jitsu one day. Yeah, one day for sure, without a doubt, you know? <laughs> Blue belt masters for... I'm not well, criticizing those guys. I'm saying it's great for the sport. Judo doesn't have it, and I'm jealous. I don't know how... That's it, why judo how, I don't know how judo, it, you, that could happen in judo, though. It's like already... It's like wrestling also doesn't have it, because it's all... They both are so... I guess it's a double-edged sword to be an Olympic sport. It is. You know, it's it's uh, it's overly specializes the sport, I guess. You know, too, yeah. yeah the true. government support yeah. is necessary to be to send these yeah. athletes to the Olympics and World Circuits. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, 
the infrastructure is already there. It's a, a, I don't know yeah. how you could do this in America. Yeah. And judo is dangerous. Uh, judo is dangerous. But yeah, it's a, maybe it's just, a, I mean, it's the nature of the sport. How do you? Yeah. Nature, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answers. <laughs> Take out throws and just do ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, but banning certain techniques in different levels yeah. is big. And, you know, that was a huge criticism, you know, for judo when they do stuff like this. Yeah. But why not do it at different ranks? Yeah. This belt can do this. This belt can do that. No drop sanagis before, boot, belt, whatever it is. Jiu-Jitsu is doing it now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even I'm... like no gi masters worlds. If you're over 30, there's no heel hooks allowed. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, these guys got to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> and these guys got to keep feeding the machine. We need more population doing it. Yeah. You know? So these are some ideas why judo, you know, sucks. I mean, obviously, I'm half joking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, You're noticing a lot yeah. of things from, like, doing BJJ nowadays. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this stuff was, like... I've already kind of known yeah. before because of the wrestling. I wrestled in college. Yeah. I wrestled in high school. It's a machine, right? There's tons of yeah. people doing it. You're part of this community, this massive community. They care about each other. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying judo guys don't, but we could be better, yeah. right? We could be safer. We could have more people doing it. We could have more of a sort of a community supporting system, right? It shouldn't be all these little micro dojos who are in isolation in all these remote areas, yeah. super spread out. We got to be collective. And pushing the sport forward. So, so actually, what I'm hearing is that there's a spectrum, right? Like one end there's BJJ where it's all grassroots, more geared towards hobbyists, so on and so yeah. forth. And there's yeah. on the other end there's wrestling in America or judo in international judo where it's like mm. there's tons of government support, super professional, specialized. Like these, there are gigantic machines. And yeah. judo in America. Is it this like weird space where it's kind of grassroots at the same time? It doesn't even have like this infrastructure built. So you're what you're suggesting is that it, you it goes we go towards more like BJJ in America. I think it'll be good. Just having more population of people doing it safely, yeah. I think is the best. And my number one thing, you know, I have all these like little things. Yeah. Like for instance, when I'm teaching class, my number one philosophy that guides me when I'm teaching class is total engagement. Yeah. Everyone engaged. That's why I freaking hate like a uh, karate class where some two people are doing karate and everyone's just watching. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety percent of the class is checked out. <laughs> Even when we're doing like forward rolls and stuff and there's half the class are standing on the wall, that's not total engagement. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Right? So uh, total engagement is my philosophy when it comes to like in the training room and when it comes to growing judo, uh, it's, you know, everything should be guided by growing dojo memberships, period. If you're a USJF, New York State judo, how can we help the sport? Double everyone's membership, not price, <laughs> volume of people doing it. Yeah. Right. Help support the gyms to be better. Right. So now when there's more money coming in at the grassroots level, theoretically, we're going to double the number. Yeah. Right. There's going to be double the number of competitors, double the number of fees going to the United States Judo Federation. Right. And the money just kind of flows up. And then and imagine if yeah. every school average dojo, I don't know, let's just say. 87 students was the national average or something. Let's just say. All of a sudden now the national average is 160. The math's a little bit off, but you know. Yeah. Right? Let's just say that's the new number. Yeah. Now there's actual money in it. Now there's more incentive for people to come train and just open up new schools. Yeah. So now there's more people starting it, more people choosing it as a full-time career. And it's like a vir right? virtuous cycle. Yeah. It's a virtuous cycle, yeah. So that's what we need, more money in the sport. How are we going to get more money? Doubling, right? And spending money on programs that educate dojo owners to grow their own school, mm -hmm. right? And having those owners interacting and networking and pushing the whole judo sort of agenda or the goals, right? So we could develop this community, you know? So <clears throat> how can we, I mean, yeah, it's easy to say we're yeah. going to double the membership, but what can we do? 
What are you? Are you? Are you no, making uh, videos? How to no, run the stuff? Not. I should. I should. But I don't really follow my own advice when it comes to a lot of this stuff. <laughs> Sales training, follow up, proper follow up, looking at the retention numbers, and you know, sending out retention phone calls and yeah. texts and stuff like this. You know, I got to do some of that stuff. A lot of the back end stuff. But education, really, education, educating dojo owners. Yeah. Right? Maybe even pairing up with BJJ and then working with those guys a little bit more. Who knows? You know, I think it's kind of happening, but we got to be better. Yeah. As a community, we really do. And uh, these are some of my thoughts on why judo sucks. <laughs> you know, I love the sport itself, man. Yeah. I can't get enough of it. And I think it's the most dynamic, beautiful thing ever. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't see it because they're too blinded by the one throw. Yeah. And it's not contextual. And that's sort of my mission to kind of get that information out there in the form of a yeah. YouTube video. Hey, look what's going on. What what are these champions doing? What are some of the tactics that you don't see? And then kind of putting that out there. And I think I'm doing my job, you know? I see a lot it's of, up to the community yeah. to share. <laughs> I see a lot of comments like, oh, I don't even do judo, but I watch your video, Shintaro, and all that. Yeah, I see a lot of those. And maybe yeah, it's just my passion for it yeah. just spills out. And hopefully some of them will convert into actual judo judokas and hope so yeah hope so i get messages all the time hey i you know always wanted to do judo i've been watching your videos for years yeah i finally started i got the courage to go thank you so much yeah two weeks later i got i tore my acl and, <laughs> you know i quit or like what well, <laughs> i get emails like that all the time yeah you know? man it's and tough. that's education you know we need more education for the owners the dojo owners so that the people who are at the grassroots level we have to we have to be better yeah yeah yeah. So well, that's why judo sucks. Yeah. Hopefully, this was somewhat helpful. A little bit negative, a little bit clickbaity. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. Thank you for listening to my rant. We got to be better, guys. We got to be better. So, take every content that I produce and just reshare it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I tell a... you, we have to be louder than the mainstream critics. Yeah. But it's just. With the judo chops. And then, obviously, that stuff doesn't phase me anymore. You know? Yeah, me neither. I mean, I'm so used to it. I just kind of go with it. Yeah. Now. It's like, I'll judo chop you fucking... Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, but we have to be louder than that. Yeah, I we mean... We have to be cooler than the football players and the baseball players and the guys who are actually doing big sports. Yeah. <laughs> Mainstream sports. So, you can... Yeah, you can share your throws. And I think we mentioned this before. If you guys... Yeah. If you send those videos to Shintaro, Shintaro will share them back too. I have not been doing it. But I'll start. <laughs> You know, this is the thing, right, guys? If you're going to make videos on, on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram. Uh, Instagram, don't do it as hard as you can where you're flopping around and stumbling your feet, okay? The best technique that looks most aesthetically pleasing are the ones that you have full control, yeah. which means when you throw someone and your feet are rooted and you're not taking little mini steps to catch your balance. Right, right. Okay? Those are sort of the most aesthetically pleasing videos. Yeah. So <clears throat> I would focus on that, doing the technique slowly, and then make sure that your feet are planted. Yeah. Right? Those those are sort of the main tips for me if you're going to be making videos online. And if you share those good videos with Shintaro, yeah. Shintaro may yep. share them back. Reshare them, I mean. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, I think that was about it. I was more, I mean, the title was a little clickbaity, but I think ultimately yep. we want this to be constructive. Uh, yes, for all, sure. All that, we... Yeah everyone wants is for judo to grow in america that's exactly right yeah that's exactly right yeah all right that's about it uh, yep. for this episode and we'll see you guys in the next episode thank you very much guys